What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be watching and reacting to Chris Hemsworth's workout brought to you by Men's Health, Train Like a Celebrity. What's up guys, welcome to JR Strength and Fitness, your friendly YouTube channel with all of your extra science needs, your reaction video wants, and of course some extra ass tutorials because why the hell not? If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe, tell your friends about me, go check out the other videos I have. This is the second installment of the Train Like a Celebrity series, the reaction videos that I'm going to be doing on this channel. If you want to see the first one, Zac Efron's Baywatch workout, click the link that's somewhere on this page and then of course you know follow that like it subscribe etc and again like last video these are just for commentary this is just for educational entertainment purposes only i'm not trying to be so critical this is not exercise prescription please see a physician and a exercise professional in person that you are willing to write a check to and don't take advice from me i'm just some dude with the camera even though i am an exercise professional now that I got that whole entire thing out of the way. So this video brought to you by Men's Health is Chris Hemsworth workout. So I believe his trainer is going to walk through his workout, his re regimen that he does. So a lot of you know Chris Hemsworth, right? For some of you who do not know, Chris is a god. Well, yeah, in that sense, but also dude's in good shape. So obviously he's doing something and it's working out pretty well. So this will be interesting to watch and kind of see because i don't really know chris too much like before the thor days because last video we went over zach efron's video and you remember zach efron back in those skinny days so you so you know straight off the bat like this dude had to put in some work in order to get to where he is so obviously chris hemsworth might be a little different so i'm curious how the whole entire thing is going to work all right let's get it Hey guys, we're here in beautiful Byron Bay. My name's Luke Saki. Hang on, I'm, I'm not American. I, I can just do it Australian, yeah? Hey guys, I'm Luke Zaki. I'm Chris Hemsworth's trainer. I'm gonna take you through a workout oh, with Australia. Chris himself. Luke, we, we're not gonna do it, Chris. Why not? We can't get him, mate. He's too expensive. Then who are we gonna use? I got <laughs> no clue right now. We're trying to we'll figure it out. Let's get onto it now, okay? Sure. Bummer. Wrapped on the film, Men in Black. The look for this film was to go for more of an athletic, less bulky look than Thor. So I designed the program with dumbbells, body weight exercises, and basically like a circuit where you just keep moving for 30 minutes. This worked out great for us because we traveled a lot on the film and wherever we were, we could get this workout done. But let's go have a look. Okay, so he pretty much gave us the goal, what their goal is. So we have an idea how these workouts are structured and then their purpose of essentially. Mention trying to lean out for that Men in Black role instead of the bulkier Thor that we are all familiar with. So, okay, makes sense. So dumbbell, circuit style, body weight. Okay, I can vibe with that. So at least we understand what the goal is. We're gonna start with the warm up. Warm up is so important for every workout. It really sets you up for a good workout, prevents injuries. We'd normally like to warm up for 10 minutes and start with a simple exercise like walking on your hands. This is constant for 10 minutes. Don't let your feet touch the ground. Only joking. I'll this is Bobby, say. Chris's stuntman. Fancy seeing yeah. you here, mate. <laughs> Hello, legends. <laughs> I'm going to take Bobby through the workout. First exercise we're going to do for the warm up is bear crawls. This is a great exercise to use because it's a full body workout. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Gonna start slow and progressively get quicker. Force going up, keeping your core tight, and then now your shoulders are driving your back. This is a perfect body weight exercise to really get the heart rate up and get nice and warm. Is it normal that so, I'm tired already? <laughs> it's meant to be hard, mate. The second exercise we're doing for the warm up is body weight squats. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Bob, now I want you to do a squat. Here I want you standing with your feet shoulder width apart, Basically, all I want you to do is pretend like you're sitting down and keep the weight on your heels. Keep that core tight and keep your spine neutral. You can overcomplicate squatting, just pretend like you're sitting down in a chair and you keep your weight on your heels. 
You're going to get there. How's my breathing? Suck. Good? <laughs> good, mate. <laughs> good, good. Now that Bob's nice and warm, we're going to go into the... Okay, the warm-up is pretty straightforward. It had two exercises. I'm assuming it's only partially the warm-up because, well, there's only two things. There's a lot of other things they could probably warm up and they're probably pressed with time. But for the most part, they introduced crawling. I think crawling is fantastic. A lot of people in my, in my area, as far as like core conditioning, some of my clients, the athletes I train, they're going to crawl in some shape or form. So bear crawls are pretty good. Crab walks are pretty good. I'm a huge fan of lateral bear crawls, especially loaded. I have a lot of people do them. It's great for overall shoulder stability, core stability, and yes, it is tiring. Squats are pretty generic and they're pretty simple. So, but five minutes of it, damn. The workout, we're gonna do eight weighted exercises for eight reps, then into three core exercises with no break going through three times. Are you ready, Bob? Yeah, I mean, at least it's not hot. Wow. <laughs> so. First exercise is a weighted burpee. So it's just like doing a normal body weight burpee, but you got weights in your hand. So let's go, Bob. I want you to bend down, keeping your core tight. Pose out. Oosh. Spine is neutral, head in good position. One more, let's go, Bob. Down, core tight. Looking forwards, back Booyah. stays neutral and up. The second exercise we're gonna do is a curl and press. This is working the biceps and shoulders in the one exercise. It's a bit more functional, keeping your core switched on, and we're just gonna rep them out, aren't we, Bob? Yes, we are. I say! <laughs> Bob, pull up with the curl. Here, I want you to keep your shoulders back into press. Keeping that core tight, weight on your heels, head in neutral position, just curl and press. All right, let's break down these first two exercises first. So weighted burpee. So I kind of implement these in my hit classes a little bit in CrossFit, not necessarily. Um, what I loved about it was that it was controlled. It was very controlled. It might just be for the camera, but what my problem is with burpees is that they get sloppy. And especially if you add weight on it, plus fatigue, they get really sloppy. And when things get sloppy, things can go wrong. So I like how controlled it was because it's not necessarily I'm against burpees. I'm against sloppy, fatigue-seeking burpees. It's especially when you add weight to it. It's it's kind of a it's a trade-off. What? How tired do you want to get? Like how risky do you want this exercise to be? So as a trainer, I try to help people kind of find that middle ground. But if people are just flopping down on the ground and getting back up, I do not see the overall goal for that. Squat and press, it's a pretty simple, you know, combination exercise where you combine two movements into one to form a multi-varied, multi-dimensional compound movement. So, sure, I can go with that. Onto the goblet squat, we're hitting the lower body. More squats. Great thing about a goblet squat is exactly like a body weight squat, but you're really focusing more on core here because naturally that weight is pulling you forward. Oh, yes. The next exercise we're going to do is standing tricep extensions. This is a bit more functional by standing up. Again, we're really testing the core here, and then we're going to be working on the triceps. Are you ready now, Bob? Ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Main thing here is you want to keep your back straight and your core tight, elbows back. That's really going to put tension on the triceps, and really focus on the muscle we're working here. But always remember form and keep your back straight. Perfect, Bobby, good work. See how his head's nice and neutral, he's looking forward, he's keeping that core tight as he's working these triceps. The first two, you had the weighted burpee, and then you had the squat and press. So, yeah, okay, generally overall compounding movement. Second two, you had the goblet squat. Goblet squat's are obviously a compound movement where it's involving multiple muscles, multiple joints are being utilized at any given rep. The tricep extension is an interesting exercise to kind of throw in there because they took a movement, the squat and press, they took two aspects of a movement of an exercise and just combined them into a you know, multi-dimensional movement. The tricep extension is a completely single isolation exercise. It's kind of interesting that it was thrown in there, um, but uh, for the most part, maybe it's just utilizing the same uh, equipment that they were using with a single dumbbell. Maybe that's the reason so I can I can understand it from that perspective Legs at the same time very functional. Are you ready? Born ready 
<laughs> set up for this exercise. I want you stepping back with your right foot and you're going to do the curling motion as you come down. This is so functional, this exercise. You're working legs, biceps at the same time. Doing this as well, you're really testing your core. Good work, Bob, good work. <laughs> the last three exercises, six, seven and eight, are purely designed at hitting shoulders at every angle. Here we're going to start with a lateral raise. The biggest thing here is you want to control the weight. You don't want to be arching your back, so control the weight. Don't start too heavy. So start off with a lateral raise, keeping your core tight, and control that weight. Now into a front raise, and into an upright row. Keep that chin straight. Good work, Bob. All right, those final four exercises, the, the, uh, the lunge and curl, same thing, you're combining two exercises into one exercise. You lunge and you curl at the same time. So this is another form of compound kind of exercise. So it's great and all. The thing about those kind of movements, you have a trade-off. So if I'm going to lunge and I'm going to emphasize the lunge, then I'm. you should, you should, like for the love of God, you should be able to lunge more with more weight than bicep curling. You should be able to. If not, something went wrong. So for the most part, you have a trade-off. Either I'm going to use weight that I can curl, but the lunge is not gonna feel so much, then it's just going to be kind of either, kind of a nuisance in a way, but for the most part, these are eight reps, so it's not like there's a significant amount of reps to cause any sort of significant you know, muscle damage or significant metabolic stress. So for the most part, sure you can do that but i would rather emphasize well going a little heavier on those lunges keeping those curls you know they can use the same weight but keeping them separate because those two different movements require a different load in order to actually adequately stimulate muscle growth or metabolic stress or whatever you're trying to do so that's the only problem i have with that the last three exercises were all kind of just shoulder oriented move movements. So again, they're probably just emphasizing the equipment that they have. So, you know, yeah, you have dumbbells, it's easy to incorporate kind of raises and upright rows and those kind of things. So pretty straightforward as far as that goes. So there were a couple movements and a couple muscle groups that I didn't see necessarily utilize in this workout. So I'm not quite sure if this is supposed to be all over en encompassing as far as the entire body goes. So didn't see much hinging movement. So as far as like Romanian deadlifts, the deadlifts of the world, you can kind of consider the weighted burpee a part of that, but it's kind of, uh, uh, I'm gonna say no. And then I didn't see much rowing. You can probably incorporate the upright row in that kind of category, but I didn't see any legitimately horizontal or vertical pulling. So uh, that's the other aspect that I, uh, as far as like those movements that I kind of saw, but if you kind of do them in the circuit, then you're probably gonna get you know something out of it. So for the most part, cool. To finish, we're gonna do core exercises. We're gonna do three exercises, eight reps each. We're gonna do a plank punch out, a plank pulse, and a plank pike. Are you ready? Plankage. Setting up for the plank, I want to put your elbows underneath your shoulders, your knees here, and I want you to switch on your core before you go into the plank. So switch on your core now, Bob. Go up into plank. Now I want you to punch, eight punches, keeping that core tight at all times. Pulse, you just rock them forward. So your whole body goes forward and back. One, two, three. Now pike, you're just coming up here, driving up. One, good. Pull up. Really focus on pulling that core in as you come up. Three, four. That's the Man in Black workout done. You need 30 minutes to smash it out. It's gonna get you shredded and chiseled and you may look like Bobby. Thanks for the talk, I mean the training, not the talk. Okay, so first off, um, the abs are, you know, like I said, that if you saw my Zac Efron, you know, reaction video, then you know that I like having abs done at the end if you're trying to seek out fatigue or just add a bunch of reps. Because as far as like activation goes, kind of engaging the core, I tend to do that at the beginning. And it's kind of interesting when people say, switch on your core, or like engage your core, like what 
the frick does that mean? Your normal, average person is not going to understand what that means. Like, what? I'm like squeezing my stomach. Like, what else do you, what else more do you want? So I think it gets a little overemphasized. If you engage the core adequately, adequately with a few, you know, top notch exercises such as, you know, a, you know, planks of the world, the bird dogs, the dead bugs, those kind of things at the beginning, you don't necessarily have to consciously to, to be so overly conscious about them. They'll be fine. And for the most part, arbitrarily it looked like everything was at like an eight rep count, which is like, that's like a decent rep range, but it feels like it was arbitrary where all these exercises were just given eight, where some exercises could probably be given 12, like the lunge, for example, some exercise could be given like five, some exercise could be given 20. It really depends. Cause I, 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 I personally have a problem when I see uh, exercises just across the board, just given some arbitrary number as if that's just, it's just how it is. So I'm like, um, you know, some exercises are designed for a specific, you know, purpose, a specific utility. Some exercises are better adequately used for strength oriented, power oriented, um, time under tension oriented, metabolically and you know demanding so it really depends so i'm so overall if you incorporate eight exercises you chose just like random eight exercises and you form them into a circuit and you did them back to back without any rest yeah you are going to get fatigued and you're going to get a workout in so for the most part if the goal is to just burn some calories you know maybe like work on that cardio a little bit then yeah this is going to work out for you. If you couple a bunch of exercise together, that's essentially how those kind of things work. That's essentially how a lot of boot camp kind of classes go, group exercise classes go. So um, for the most part, it's not inherently wrong, but as far as like being optimal with it, I want to see what Chris did as far as getting big, because I don't think he was born big, but it is what it is. So. I enjoy the workout for the most part. It's pretty straightforward. It's nothing too, you know, too crazy. So whether it is or is not his workout is not 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 my place to kind of like dictate. So for the most part, if you do that kind of workout, yeah, you're going to get tired and you're going to get fatigued and you're going to feel like you had a pretty good workout overall. And if it takes 30 minutes, like you said, then easy. There's no excuse. You can just literally do it with a couple of dumbbells and call it good. So, so again, these are just for educational and entertainment purposes only. So please do not do anything that I say or do without consulting a physician, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.